what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be telling you the best ways to get value out of your purchases in rise of kingdoms now i've wanted to make a video like this for a while and i think right now is a good time to do so why well today is october 20th and i would say over the course of the next five to seven days we're gonna see a halloween event come around for rise of kingdoms this is around the time last year that we saw the halloween event and i think it's going to be one of those events where you spend maybe seven thousand gems and part of the uh the the premium portion of the event rewards column becomes available to you hopefully that's the case i don't remember they usually alternate and i don't remember what the last one was so maybe not but if that's not the case for the halloween event it will be the case for either the black friday thanksgiving event or the christmas event that they do at the end of the year or the new year's event that they do after that so right now this portion of the year this last quarter of the year is when there's a lot of really good events in rise of kingdoms and with holiday events come holiday bundles so there's going to be a lot of opportunities to spend money in this game over the next couple of months now this video will be talking about low spending and high spending priorities but i do want to say guys uh this is you know this is a mobile game that I've spent a decent amount of money on, and I'm okay with the amount that I've spent on this game because this is an entertainment. Uh, this is this game provides me a ton of entertainment value, right? Everyone has their own entertainment expense. For some people, you pay for a Spotify membership or a Netflix membership, or maybe you just go out on the weekends and you get a couple drinks with your friends, or maybe you're an avid reader and every couple of weeks you buy a new book, right? There's all sorts of entertainment expenses. And for me, Rise of Kingdoms is the primary entertainment expense because I've played this game every day for over 700 days. Like it's been over two years that I've been playing this game. Uh, and it's, it's crazy to think about. Um, but since I spend uh, so much time playing this game and I get so much value and so much entertainment value out of it, I'm okay with spending money, even though the game is technically free to play. If you guys don't have a lot of disposable income, um, I shouldn't have to say this, but don't spend a lot of money in a mobile game. And I know a lot of the um, tactics that mobile game developers use to encourage you to spend money are are very, uh, sometimes they're very deceptive. Sometimes they're very, uh, you know, there's all sorts of timers and things happen at certain times to really incentivize you to spend money. So guys, just keep in mind moving forward in this video, uh, only spend what you can and only spend what you think is going to bring you value in your rise of kingdom experience. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about the holiday and the Halloween bundles in just a minute. But first, what I want to talk about is if you're a low spender or essentially a free to play player, right? And what I mean by that is, you know, I think a lot of you guys watching are probably free to play, but at some point in the past or the future, you got your hands on a $15 iTunes gift card or a $15 uh, Google play gift card or $25 or maybe $50 uh, of these gift cards. Right. And you decide, well, rise of kingdoms is the only game that I really play on the app store. So I might as well spend that $25 on rise of kingdoms where should i spend that money right and this is what i would call essentially a free to play player right i know it's not free to play but the difference between a 25 dollars an account and a zero dollar account is very small right it's a very small difference obviously minamoto is one of those differences but realistically speaking you know you're not going to be that much farther ahead by spending 25 dollars and a highly active free to play player is going to get farther than a, an inactive low spender i think right so with that being said, uh, where should you spend your money if you're spending less than $50 on Rise of Kingdoms? Uh, the first thing that I want to call your attention to is the growth fund. Um, if you are the uh, City Hall level 21 or higher, the growth fund immediately is insane value. And you know, you could buy this whenever you want, and you're eventually going to get incredible value once you hit level uh, City Hall 25. But I think City Hall 21 is when it becomes apparent because you immediately get what 20,000 gems or something like that. It's crazy the amount of gems that you get um, at that time. And the other thing is the 30 day gem supply. So the growth fund is $15. The amount of gems you're going to get here is outrageous. The 30 day gem supply is also at about 20,000 gems for $10, which is crazy. If you go into the gem store, 25,000 gems is a hundred bucks normally. Um, now you do get this over time. So you do have to log in every day in order to ensure that you get that value. But 
with your $25, those are the two things that I think are going to be the best value for you. These gems that you get from the growth fund and the uh, 30 day gem supply are gems that you can use for events such as the wheel of fortune. So I would save these gems. I wouldn't necessarily use them on, you know, the VIP shop speed ups, things like that. Uh, I would save those gems, hoard them for a long time. And then when a wheel comes around that you really want the commander for, then you can go all in and spin it to a hundred, right? Um, I think that's the best use of, of those gems. Um, of course you could also use a portion of those gems to get your VIP level up to level 10, which is when you're going to start to get a legendary commander sculpture, uh, every single day, which is very, very valuable. Or of course, if you can get your way up to VIP, uh, 12 or even VIP 14, which is pushing big spender late game. Um, those are really key VIP levels that, you know, you may want to gem during a more than gems event. Of course, we'll talk about that later. Um, or if you have to, you can use some of those gems for books of the covenant. I don't know if I would necessarily recommend that. Um, but you absolutely could. I certainly did when I was leveling up my account. So I'm not here to tell you, you can't cause Hey, I've done it right. So those are the first two places. I think those are the best value that you can get, um, for your dollars spent in this game. I think the rest of these, uh, seven day supplies are relatively useless with the exception of these two right here, the speed up supply and the material supply, I think are decent value. If all you're looking for is what they're providing, right? So you actually get more speed ups from this $5, uh, seven day speed up than if you were to go in and buy like a $5, I don't know, fountain of wisdom or something like that. Right? So if all you want is speed ups, um, and you only have $5 to spend, I think this might be your best option. Uh, but for the most part, I would ignore pretty much all these seven day supplies, right? Like just, just most people watching this aren't really going to be buying those at all. Right. And, and I think the food wood, stone and gold just don't, just don't ever buy them. Right. It's, it just doesn't seem like that just says you have to be a mega well for those to be, be valuable to you. The next place that you could spend money are the VIP special privilege, uh, bundles. These are one-time purchase bundles that you can get at certain VIP levels. And what we're really going to be talking about uh, in this portion is Minamoto, right? Uh, that's the biggest draw to these lower levels of bundles. Um, now it's worth noting that you do get books of the covenant for these. Um, and those you will need to get T five troops, right? So eventually you're going to need these books of the covenant. They are worth 10 gems each. So technically this is 5,000 gems worth of book of the covenant, which is crazy for $10, right? $10 for 5,000 to save essentially 5,000 gems is good. Plus you get 70 Minamoto sculptures. But I think the biggest thing that people focus on when they look at the VIP bundles is, is Minamoto worth it, right? Cause that's the biggest thing that separates these special privilege bundles from other things. You can get speed ups and experience and all this other stuff from other places in the game, right? But Minamoto is the only, you can only get it from these bundles. So is Minamoto worth it? I think there are two stopping points for Minamoto, right? And, and these two things are, these will basically depend on whether or not you should get him. If you haven't invested in him at all, you can get him to five, five, one, one with some careful leveling. Uh, and I think that that is about $30 worth, right? Because you need 10 sculptures to summon him and then 190 sculptures to get him to five, five, one, one, assuming you level him up properly. And if you do that, uh, I think that's a pretty solid use of $30. I think a five, five, one, one Minamoto with Pelagius is going to be your best, uh, cavalry March for a long time as a free to play or low spender. Eventually you'll get enough of Cao Cao from the gold keys in order to throw him in the mix and a Minamoto Cao Cao. While it's not the greatest combination in the world, I think for a free to play player, it will be a solid choice. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And the way that you can accomplish this is you can buy the $20 bundle here, and then you can actually skip the VIP six chest and you can buy, I think it's the rest of the bundle. So let's see, that's 40, uh, 60, 70, 80, 90. And I think this you get when you make any purchase. So, um, yeah, you get it for about $30. You can get a five, five, one, one Minamoto. And I think that's a solid investment in the game. You're going to use Minamoto pretty much forever at that point. Now, here's a question that I've gotten a lot. And that is, should I get a five, five, one, one Minamoto, or should I buy the growth fund and a 30 day gem supply? Because those are roughly the same value. And I would say if you're very careful with, uh, your account and you're very active in the game, you play it every single day and you're okay with hoarding gems, then I would say, um, getting the 30 day gem supply with the growth fund is a better investment than 30, 
than a $30 Minamoto at 5511. And the reason that I think that is because you're going to get so many gems from that 30 day gem supply. Uh, and from the growth fund that you're going to be able to spin uh, the wheel of fortune for either Richard or Isong Ye, or maybe later down the line, you can get uh, Alexander the Great. You're going to get a lot of sculptures from that. Now, are you going to get enough to get them to 5511? Maybe not, um, but you'll be able to really have a head start on a commander that is better than Minamoto, right? And so, it, you know, if you invested in Minamoto and not those things, don't feel bad about it. I think that both, you could make an argument for both because Minamoto is great for killing barbarians and PVE content um, and events like Soroli and stuff like that. But I would say in general, it's probably better to do the growth fund and a 30 day gem supply than it is to get a 5511 Minamoto. Now, if you're a big spender and you get to really high VIP levels early on in the game, uh, then you might be thinking, should I be buying the higher end VIP bundles? And I would say, um, it depends, right? Hannibal Barca is usable in KBK one and virtually never after that. Um, you can use him in your Canyon, especially if he's expertise to pretty much only if he's expertise. Um, but I just, I don't know, man. I just don't feel like Hannibal Barca is a great commander. He's probably the worst legendary, maybe Charlemagne's worse. I don't know. Um, I definitely think Minamoto is better in terms of num number of ways to use him, right? Uh, so Barca, I don't think is very useful. However, you have to keep in mind things like the VIP, what is it? The 13 chest uh, gives you 2000 books of the covenant, right? So that's 20,000 gems worth of books of the covenant. If you're still needing those books, then maybe it's worth it, right? But I think for most players who reach VIP 13, they're probably pretty close to finishing their castle already, or they already finished it a while before. So should you buy those higher end VIP bundles? Only if you're a big spender, Hannibal Bark is not really worth it. It is what it is. The next bundle I want to talk about is called writer of history. And if you summon a legendary commander, you do get the writer of history bundle that appears um, for any legendary commander that you summon. I don't know why Constance is back there. But regardless, this is a $5 bundle that gets you 10 universal legendary commander sculptures and 1,050 gems. This is an excellent value bundle for $5. This is probably the best $5 that you can spend in the game. Um, it's just, it's just, there's so few ways to get universal legendary commander sculptures that this is definitely worth it. And if it's your first purchase, you also get Minamoto. So, hey, that's pretty cool. The experience you're gonna use in the early game, absolutely, you're gonna use these golden stars. This is probably my favorite bundle in the game because it's five bucks, it's nothing crazy, and you can use these sculptures wherever you want, right? So this is a really high priority value bundle for me. The downside of this bundle is it's only around for an hour. So when you see that you can summon a legendary, just be aware that this bundle is gonna pop up. And if you want to buy this bundle, but you don't maybe have the $5 right now, it's better to just leave that legendary commander alone in your uh, commander lineup and just summon it later down the line when you have maybe a gift card from a family member or a friend or something like that, um, or an extra $5 that you can spend on the game. That's my recommendation because I would say if you're a, a low spender, buying this bundle as often as you can is, is a good investment in my book. Now, there are other bundles that show up on a time limit. Some of those bundles a, a pop up when either your city gets rallied or something like that, and it's called Fate Changer. That I think is either a $50 or $100 bundle. Uh, there may be slower iter or smaller iterations of that bundle for, for uh, weaker players. I don't really remember. Um, but that bundle is incredibly valuable for an end game player uh, but not that valuable for a early game player in my opinion because a majority of the speed ups that you get from the hundred dollar or the fifty dollar fate changer bundle are in the form of healing speed ups which are really only valuable if you don't need universal speed ups which you can get from other bundles so keep that in mind if you're a late game player city hall 25 basically a t5 player uh, or a t5 player certainly uh, the fate changer bundle is good value, but for lower, um, or newer players, I don't know if it's really the best place you should spend $50 in this game. Cause then you're going to have a lot of healing speed ups and still not T5. Another timed, uh, bundle that shows up is when you hit certain city hall levels. And I think it's, uh, it, it might coincide with the growth fund. Um, I don't remember exactly, but you definitely get a bundle that shows up at city hall 23 and 21, probably 25. Um, but I don't know about the rest of these here. I think you get one that pops up at like level 
10 or 11 or something like that there are multiple city hall levels that pop a limited time bundle and i would say that they are decent value um probably better value than the super value bundles here with the exception of maybe king's coronation but the downside of those timed bundles is that a they're timed so once they pop and if you don't buy it right then and there they're gone and the other downside of them is that they won't apply towards the recharge event or the recharge rewards event now you might be saying what exactly is that well every once in a while uh and this is important now because it's gonna happen with the holiday uh, halloween event so mark my words um every time that there is a a holiday event there is an event a five-day event called recharge rewards and you have to um recharge a certain number of gems every single day in order to unlock additional value for those purchases for that given day and this is a great way to get universal legendary commander sculptures however not all bundles are applicable for that event and one of the bundles that isn't applicable is this writer of history and similar timed bundle exclusives now the way that you can tell which bundles will count towards recharge rewards event and which ones won't is how are you getting the gems in the writer of history bundle you're getting your gems in the form of gem items right if i make this purchase my gem count is not going to go up what's going to happen is i'm going to get the uh 10 000, or i'm sorry 1050 gems in the form of gem tokens right and so that's an important distinction between the two and that's also the case for the fate changer that's also the case for the um the bundles that show up at certain city hall levels so they are good value but they don't coincide with recharge rewards which is also really good value so if you end up skipping those um and i think most of you probably will because most players are free to play when they're first leveling up their city um i think that that's okay but keep in mind that they are decent value um they're not the best in the game but they're decent value and certainly better than other uh uh another super value bundles here now really quick on the topic of the recharge rewards event there's also um a road to greatness event that you see at the beginning of the game um or before you make any large purchases in the game essentially and that will just give you extra value for those initial purchases i'm not really going to cover that here because you just get those uh, you just get that value when you recharge uh, a certain number of gems and it's just gonna happen so yeah and i guess the last thing that's worth noting about these is that even though these purchases don't count towards the recharge rewards event if there is an event that is called uh more than gems happening at the time that these bundles pop um then all gems spent are created equal meaning uh, it doesn't matter where you get your gems from as long as you spend them uh you'll get the value from the more than gems event so i guess that instance may be a good time to purchase uh, a bundle like this or well this one i would purchase pretty much all the time but like if you hit a certain city hall level um and it pops a 50 to 100 dollar bundle um potentially that value uh, might be there if it happens during a more than gems event and you can immediately use those gems uh, for that event so that's something to consider as well but I think that's very situational and and it's you can basically make that decision if you have the money at that time or not because if you don't then it doesn't matter if it's valuable or not because it you're not gonna buy it let's start to talk about some other bundles that are in the game okay so the next place that you can find value in terms of super value bundles is going to be uh in two different places the primary one is going to be a bundle that's not listed here and that is the holiday bundle and what i mean by that is anytime that there is a holiday event uh whether it's halloween christmas springtime or new year's chinese new year whatever it is uh, there's pretty much every month or every other month there is a holiday bundle that comes around and typically that bundle will be a better value than anything else in this uh, super value bundle area and the reason for that is because it typically gives you a way to get some legendary commander sculptures out of the deal right it'll give you some sort of difficult or nearly impossible obtainable themed item that you can exchange for legendary commander sculptures which uh you know really it sets it a, sets it uh far above the other bundles that you would see here so if you're looking to buy a super value bundle i would actually wait and time it with one of the holiday events and also when the holiday events come around typically there is the recharge rewards so that's a really great uh, time to spend money if you only have 15 30 dollars to spend and you've already bought the growth fund supply depot and you want to spend a little bit more um i would wait till there's a holiday event that comes around and make the purchase dur during that event for the holiday bundle during recharge rewards that's a great way to spend uh, just a couple of dollars however if you don't want to wait or you are already going to plan on doing that when it comes around but you want to make a purchase now 
um and you've already done all the other things we've talked about king's coronation is going to be your best friend this is definitely the best super value bundle here in the shop and the reason is pretty obvious um you can only buy it one time right and so that's how you know it's the best because they limit the lifetime purchase to one uh everything else in here you can buy multiple times but king's coronation gives you a ton of speed ups they are universal speed ups so you can use them on anything that you want whether it's speeding up your buildings or your research or your maybe your troops if you've already maxed your tech king's coronation is an obvious choice right you don't even have to think about this if there's not a holiday bundle around and it's not coming up soon and you want to buy a super value bundle king's coronation is the way to go the next best option is call of the ancients and this bundle comes around uh every other week now call of the ancients i should say um is really good for players who are fighting in the open field they're rallying all that good stuff this is mainly for uh end game players t5 players or you know almost t5 players um this is an insanely valuable bundle it gives you a ton of uh of speed ups it gives you a ton of resources which is good um call the ancients is the best bundle for people who are fighting and who are already finished with their city hall they're already finished with their research this is the one that you should go for um people often say should i get call the ancients or war machine um i would say for a war uh call the ancients is better uh call the ancients is also better for arc i think that call the ancients in for pretty much everything is better because um there's just so much to love about this bundle now if you haven't maxed out your city um and you've purchased king's coronation right or maybe you've bought king's coronation a couple of times and the next one that's around is the 50 dollars king's coronation and you don't you don't want to spend the 50 dollars for king's coronation right um what you could do is you could buy the city of hope bundle right the city of hope bundle uh, is a really good bundle i think a lot of late game players ignore this bundle because they should they don't have a reason to buy this bundle but if you don't have city hall 25 yet city of hope is arguably the best bundle that you could buy after king's coronation right city of hope is going to give you a ton of building speed ups and it's going to give you more resources that you care about for your buildings in exchange for gold so if you look at other uh, bundles here you'll see that they give you some number of all resource types so there's four resource types in the game and it'll give you some of all of them uh king uh, sorry city of hope um gives you more resources of food wood and stone and no gold at all which for late game players is atrocious for early game players is exactly what they need so the city of hope bundle if you're not city hall 25 is a great purchase after king's coronation after city of hope let's say you've got your city hall to 25 already uh the next best option would be fountain of wisdom right now keep in mind if you're looking at max purchasing fountain of wisdom and by that i mean spending 385 dollars plus tax if there's tax where you live you really have to be a big spender to be buying fountain of wisdom right because like i said there are so many other opportunities in this game to spend money that if you're buying fountain of wisdom you're probably a bigger spender right because again you could be getting more instead of buying fountain of wisdom you could just wait for the next holiday event and buy that holiday bundle and it's going to be better than fountain of wisdom right in the in the grand scheme of things so if you're looking at the regular super value bundles um fountain of wisdom is good for getting t5 but putting it into perspective you probably should be waiting for those holiday bundles to come around but regardless fountain of wisdom is a good next option now if you are t5 right and you've already bought king's coronation you don't need city of hope you don't need fountain of wisdom and maybe you're not you're not buying call the ancients or war machine right now because you've got some troops then you can look at the geared up bundle now uh, the geared up bundle is the way that you're going to be getting some equipment in the game um at that point in the game once you're t5 equipment is going to be king right so the geared up bundle is something that you can look at uh, look at if you want to um and besides that there's really no reason to buy the other bundles here right living legend is notoriously bad value um you're never going to use these purple stars you're never going to use the blue stars the gold keys have dropped in value so far once once you're a t5 player and you have like you know some of the better legendaries uh the legendaries that you could get from this gold key are pretty you know they're not as good right if you get an you get an l sid from this gold key um it's not going to be nearly as good as your isong a that you probably or should already have by the time you're t5 right so keep that in mind um of course mulan exists so she's an exception but regardless living legend is for those people who are mega whales like you got to be like a kraken leviathan right to be buying living legend because if you max purchase it you only get like 
I don't know, seven legendary commander sculptures or some absurdly low number. And hello, you get 10 of them for five bucks. So yeah, you gotta be a mega whale to be buying living, living legend. And beyond that, um, same thing with resource reserves. I just don't, I like, I just don't see the reason to buy this. I mean, I guess you would buy it for the gold because you get way more gold here than you do for other bundles. But even still, like if you're going to be buying resource reserves as a big, as like a, as a bigger spender, I would recommend probably just uh, waiting for a holiday bundle to come around, right? That's probably your better option. Or maybe wait until you get a fate changer and buy that bundle or something like that. Um, even like the mightiest uh, conqueror here, this, uh, this bundle is around for uh, KVK. This is probably a better bundle to be buying than uh, resource reserves. Maybe um, I, I would have to kind of do the math, right? Obviously, but at least with this, you're getting the healing speed ups too, which you're going to be using during KVK. I don't know. I just, I hate when I see people buying resource reserves and and living legend and their account is less than 100, 100 million power <laughs> because if that's the case like i just don't see why you would need those, those two bundles that's just me that's just my for my experience now we haven't talked about the new world bundle uh this bundle is you know exclusively if you're going to be migrating right um now some players buy the five dollar bundle every single month or the five and ten dollar bundle every single month just so that way they can stock up those passport pages because it is difficult to get um but that's not something you're going to be doing if you're a low spender and if you need to migrate then you may not have a choice but to buy the new world bundle because of those passport page requirements so keep that in mind the new world bundle it's really situational you're only going to really get this for one reason now another thing we can talk about are the daily special offers and the mileage varies on these for sure um the first one that comes around is the Cao Cao bundle uh what i mean by that is that these treasures here give you a treasure of the warlord which gives you a chance at getting a Cao Cao sculpture or some number of Cao Cao sculptures um the thing is though that if you're a low spender like yeah Cao Cao is decent um and he he is right but you know I, I think this this is six dollars worth of value here and you're really going to be buying it for that legendary commander sculpture um you do get other stuff in here of course right like you you absolutely do especially these basic action point recovery potions um the three dollar bundle here is definitely the better option i think but um mostly you're going to be buying these for the legendary commander sculptures and Cao Cao's decent um he is he's probably the second best or third best legendary you can get from the gold keys the first being uh probably martel the second best being maybe mulan now that she's in there um but you're forced to expertise Cao Cao before the martel bundle starts coming around and when the martel bundle does come around i would say that these are uh, these are a solid purchase um just for martel because he's that good but again you're gonna spend a lot of money and be playing the game for a long time before this changes from Cao Cao to Martel so keep that in mind but I mean hey for three dollars the chance of getting a legendary sculpture plus you get eight hours of speed ups a gold key and you get 500 AP to go and kill some barbs and get you'll get some gems back from that plus you get 600 gems this is a decent purchase right here for three dollars um but just keep in mind I think there are other places that maybe you could be spending that just maybe save that three dollars and put it towards your 10 day or 30 day gem supply or spend an extra two dollars and uh you know maybe buy the the five dollar um what is it a holiday bundle that comes around for one of the holidays right that could be a better purchase now you may be saying omniarch what about just buying gems you do get double the gems for your first purchase um i don't i don't think that's i don't think that's a good idea i think pretty much any like if you're looking to spend a hundred dollars on gems um i would say probably just wait till you get a fate changer or something like that like there's just not really a reason to spend money on just gems when there's so many options and so many other opportunities to spend money in the game and like i said if if there's not a, an obvious place to spend right now there will be when there is a recharge rewards or a holiday bundle or something like that right so just straight up buying gems is uh not a great choice in my opinion and um i i just wouldn't necessarily do it anyway with that being said guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video hopefully you found it entertaining or informative or helpful or anything like that uh if you did make sure you drop a thumbs up on it of course subscribe if you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below if you have any questions about making purchases in this game or if you should get this or that maybe i can try to answer those questions for you in the comment section below and if i missed any bundles um let me know in the comment section below as well i will try to maybe make a pinned comment there's a lot of different ways to spend money in this game so i'm sure i 
I've missed a couple. Uh, to my knowledge, I can think of like the equipment bundles and things like that that I didn't talk about that pop up uh, for a limited time. As always, my social media links are in the description below. So you can follow me over there on Instagram, Twitter, Discord, and on Twitch. And there's also a link down there to download Rise of Kingdoms absolutely for free for your PC or your Mac. It's a program called Blue Stacks. It's my favorite way to play Rise of Kingdoms. It's also a way to take advantage of Google Play Points if you play primarily on an iPhone. Google Play Points are essentially just extra value that you get by making purchases on the Google Play Store. So if you don't have an Android, download Blue Stacks and there you go. Now you do. And like I said, it's completely free. So click that link in the description below to download Blue Stacks. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.